welcome to the Tony Olsen Fishing Show. We're out aboard the 17 foot Wilson Flyer High Sea Drifter, our filming boat. We're actually going to be fishing a little bit of a broken wreck about, oh, I guess we're about three or four miles offshore on the south coast of England. It's a tiny broken wreck. It's probably, I don't know, a, a waste bin and a toilet bowl. I don't know what it is. It's only very small. We're going to be trying to compare our big sounder with a deeper, which is a castable one, because we think if we anchored up tide from this wreck, we might be able to feed the deeper back over the wreck. But don't forget, an echo sounder can see the wreck and it might have a bit of side scan, but it can't see 40 yards away down there in shallow water. Whereas the deeper can be fed back and wound in and we might see something. Look, we don't know what we're gonna do with it. We don't know what we're gonna see with it. We don't even know if we're gonna catch any fish. The first stage, what we're gonna do is dan the wreck. Now that's an English term putting a Dan boy down, which is a boy. I've no idea who invented it. Obviously somebody called Dan. I've got an old sash weight here from a sash cord. In case people in other countries don't know, it's a weight for a window that opens old fashioned wooden windows. I've got some just coiling, and then I've got my, my coil of coiling here. Now what I'm gonna do, you drop this to the bottom. It looks a bit haphazard at the moment. You drop it to the bottom, you have one main boy which we'll, we're going to put over whatever hump of wreck we can find. It'll be tiny, probably three or feet, four feet high. But what you really should do is have a second one, like the commercial lobster pot fishermen do, because that gives you direction of the tide. If you only have one buoy, you wouldn't know which way the tide's going or the wind's going. If you have the second buoy, that one will hold, you know, actually show your mark. This one will should give you a bit of tide direction. Let's get out, let's drop this over and see if we can get started. Now it's coming up to high water here. If you do put the dam down as a marker, make sure you have enough rope at high water. For instance, if you put it down on low water, high tide comes, it could be sunk underneath, you're never going to see where the wreck is. So we're going back in on our quarters now and we're just going to take a look on the big sounder and see what we can see on the bottom. Okay, now you can see just in here, this could be part, I'm pretty sure, of the wreck broken up. We've zoomed in on here. And that looks like that could either be superstructure or it could even be a, a shoal of fish there. But this is the broken ground we're looking for. This is right where I'm going to put this Dan, the marker boy, over the side. This could be tied. The scoured out around the wreck and the rough ground. Who knows what's there? But we're going to go back and I'm going to try and put the marker boy somewhere around here. Don't drop it down too fast. Because it burns. Ah. We should be in 18 meters here. There you are. I've measured 18. I've got and a high water, so I can actually. This is my own little device I've made out of plywood, and I just wind around the excess like this. Clip it off in a slot. Oh, like that. Over goes the first boy, and we're slack water, so it's not going to pull too much. And there is the second one. So now what we're going to do is going to let that settle down. I know the tide's going to ebb. It's going to go this way. It's going to come east to west. So we're going to provisionally anchor up here away from it. You don't want to put your anchor in the wreck. It gets tangled. You do not want to put your tackle in the wreck. You will lose it. I want to be up there and try to see if we can't draw one or two fish away from the wreck, if indeed there's any fish on it. We're hoping the deeper will tell us there is. Well, totally awesome. I always like to catch the odd big shark or two, and we've been pretty lucky in this boat catching, uh, catching sharks. We're inshore. There has been a thresher shark about 120 pounds seen about a month ago, way up in there, inside, I think, what they call Boulder Gate, Boulder Bank, that sort of area. So, why not, when you're anchoring, put a shark line out? I've already got a bag of mashed fish here over the side. I've got some mashed up fish. So there's a bit of smell going in the water but I'm gonna wait for the tide to really push more towards that rough ground and wreck. But if there's a wreck, we hope there's small fish. If there's small fish, it's gotta be a big one, surely. 
So on our boat sounder here, uh, you can see that it's reading about 15.4, 15.3 meters uh, of the depth. So that's from the bot, from the uh, top of the boat down to the seabed is about 15.4 average. Um, there's not much. It's relatively flat here. It is broken ground. It is rough ground, um, but it's relatively flat. We are near a wreck, uh, but there's no kind of big steep peaks and things like that. But depth is about 15.3, 15.4 meters. So now I'm going to put the deeper just by the side of the boat. Well, there we go. The deeper is just out from the boat. It's not far away. It's about an arm's length away from the boat and uh, I want to get the best reading possible to see what it is and see compare it to the depth that the boat was reading. Well as you can see the deeper is reading 15.3 meters there 15.4 meters so it's spot on the same as what the boat uh, fish finder was seeing. It's also picking up that weed as well which is really good the boat one did as well uh, but the boat one our boat one wasn't reading the water temperature at the time and the deeper one is reading water temperature here as well. And there is actually a really cool uh, weather app kind of built in. You can, you can check the weather over here and it gives you kind of for your current location, uh, your, your weather, you've got your, your moon phases, you've got the wind direction, south, southeast, uh, humidity, really, really good, quite detailed. And you can change it for your favorite locations and everything like that. Um, but what we're gonna do now is picking up fish close to the boat but we're going to trot the deeper back now, uh, just just to bet where our baits will be, and just get an idea of what depths the fish are at, basically nearer our baits. Well, here we go. We've done the depth reading test, and it's the same as the boat uh, fish finder. Now I'm going to trot the deeper back, just to get an idea of what is going on over our baits. So all I'm doing is I've just got an open bail arm. Here, and I'm just feeding out line every time the deeper pulls the line a bit tighter I'm just feeding out a bit more line and obviously for those of you who are worried if you're sea fishing with the deeper about casting your deeper out this is almost as handy with the tide it's just a way a better way to just trot the deeper out it goes exactly where your baits and your line is going um, so you get a really accurate reading right above your baits what depths the fish are at now the tide is starting to turn so the boat's starting to swing a bit as well but um I'll leave it out, I'll trot it back probably about 15 yards, I'd say, 15, 20 yards, and uh, we'll see what it is picking up. So the deeper is about 20 metres now behind the boat, it's getting towards our baits, and uh, interestingly it's pinging fish at a much lower depth than the fish were, uh, that it, than it was when they were close at the boat, and that's because the chum, the chum bags that we've got up, which is mashed up fish, uh, the chum bags that we've got up are attracting, as it, as it goes out, that chum is near the surface, as it goes with the tide, it starts to sink and sink and sink, and that's when it gets down towards our baits, which are further at the back of the boat. And obviously that's showing us with the fish. They're up close, those mackerel and small fish near the chum bag, when, when I had the deeper right near the boat. But as it goes further back and it trots back towards our baits, that chum is sinking, and actually the fish are showing at a deeper depth as well. So it's all showing positive signs of some fish. So fish are showing at about 11 meters, 10 meters, uh, which is good because that's where our baits are and we're, what all we're going to do is really just keep trotting our baits back every now and then just so that they're on the bottom. I'm also, I don't know if you can see, but on the left here I'm, I'm mapping as you cast out with the Pro Plus, it maps what you do. So I've had a couple of casts around the boat, I've trotted the deeper back and what I'm going to do now is go onto the history setting um, on the app which allows me to go back a certain period of time um, for me, I've only been casting for about 10 minutes, so it's easily going to go back over all that time that I've been uh, recording with it. And then I can get an idea of what fish are where, what kind of depths they're at around the boat, not just here and behind the boat, but around the boat as well. Well, we've uh, got all the rods out. It's like a porcupine at the moment, this boat with all the rods. And it's been, I'd say, 25 minutes, half an hour. We had a little tap tap on this rod and I'm into a fish here. By the way it's planing in the water, I've got the feeling it's a ray. But we can't complain about the weather conditions. Spot on, aren't they, Dad, really? This well, is spot the on for suntan. This is the English summer, it's lasting two days. Two days, yeah. We'll get rain soon. Then we put all our t-shirts on eBay. Yeah. That was slightly left of the wreck, that one. That's... Can you see anything? Yeah, I've got him here. Here he comes. I thought, oh, by the way, yeah. plane in the water. Yeah, nice little thorny. Lovely markings on it. 
Look at the markings on that. And how clear is the water? Look at that, yeah. Brilliant. Get him in, get there. I think he's quite well hooked there, so get him in, unhook him. Have a little look. And get that bait out. There we go. Thornback Ray. And it's a female. Ch no chunk of squid, wasn't it? Chunk of squid on that one, yeah. It's quite well hooked on one of Dad's trusty rusty. Rusty, hooks. trusty and rusty. Trusty no, rusty. Them. It's now in my hand, so it's obviously sharp enough. Look at the markings on this fish. One of the things about the Thornback Ray, they have lovely, lovely markings. And actually, a lot of the rays in British waters do have really nice markings, don't they? Oh, yeah, it can be pretty. And the one that they do get out here off the eastern white grounds is the underdut ray. And they get yeah. really big ones, and they're stunning patterns on them. And that's, and the, that's uh, the crushing molars, yeah. as they call them. I've, the got my, I've got my hands just in between the kind of the cheekbones, really, here. There's a bone here, a bit of cartilage or bone, and it uh, just keeps away from the mouth. You can get a good grip. The spines are on the back there, hence the term thornback ray. You can see them here going down the back of the tail. There's also some up by the eyes as well. Not this poisoned, is, are they? No, they're no not poisoned, just a, just a sharp thing to be aware of. Unpleasant. Yeah. Well, we've just had a screaming take whilst talking to someone on the radio. Apologies, whoever that was on the boat radio. Suzanne somebody, wasn't Suzanne it? Suzanne Jane or something like that. We're sorry about that, but we just had a screaming take. Uh, Dad reckons it's a take, but I'm going smooth hand. I reckon he just slammed into the uh, into the bait. Have we got a squid on this one as well? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. For some I reason, the smooth hands don't seem to take mackerel very well. I don't know why. No, they don't like the fish baits. Now, what you doesn't crank off again? Yeah, he's kicking down there. He's just got to watch that. Prop. Clear with the other lines? Uh, yeah, all clear. Good tape though, cracking tape. No, I think you're right. I think it is a small tape. Got grey, looks like a grey. Yeah. I reckon. You see him just yeah, playing in there. Yes. That's Mr. Tope. Good. We'll take that. Another species on the squid bait. Woo! Farmer! New oh. camera! <laughs> Water on the lens job. <laughs> Well, there we go, look at that. My first tope of 2016. My first tope in probably two or three years. Uh, a small one could, could, you know, compared to what you normally can catch, but pound for pound, they're very good fighters. Related to the shark species, they do have teeth. Small little teeth there. Don't get your hands near them. But great fighting species here in the UK. They generally, when they take, they absolutely slam the bait as we just had a screaming reel. What we're gonna do now, is uh, trot the boat back on the anchor, closer to where we think the rough ground is, where we dropped that down earlier. So we're gonna get, just trot the boat back, let a bit of line out, and hopefully see if we can get some more kind of variety of species, really. Just decided to get Mike's telescopic rod out. Been lucky for me, and I've got a mackerel on the mackerel feathers. There we go. You cannot beat fresh bait, and of course, the option's there to have him as tea as well. I won't be eating him. I'm hoping a nice piece of bloody meat could bring a tope or maybe a conger off of that wreck. Well, we've had a tope. We've had a ray had some mackerel, we've had small bites on some of the other rods and now one of the rods has just screamed off again and I don't think it's anything huge but it could be another species we're not sure yet I think it is I reckon it's a smooth hound now actually small tote no small baby baby tote now we switched to a bit of mackerel I'm sure if we put bigger weights on 
uh, and then some fresh mackerel, some blood in it, we're going to get more taupe. Well, there we go. Smallest, smallest one I've definitely caught, but it's good uh, for the future of fishing. Um, and what we're going to do, the wind's blown us off a bit uh, of the wreck, so we're going to pull up the anchor and get realigned again and hopefully get those baits down there. Everybody's favourite species, the dogfish. So we've had like five species here today already. And luckily for me, I've got a panel hook on there. And luckily he's just hooked on the outside. Don't forget, when you're in t-shirts like this, grab the tail, if you can, fold it round, and then grab the head. Otherwise his tail is gonna wrap all around the back here. And this rough skin, just for you freshwater anglers out there. We'll take your skin off. In fact, years ago, the furniture makers used to use it for sandpaper. Let's pop a hook out. Maybe he's actually just biting on the hook, to be honest. They're like a shark species. Won't let go of the bait. There he is. This is what we call in the UK the lesser, lesser spotted goldfish. They can indeed reach plague proportions in certain places of Ireland, but trust me, if you're fishing in bad weather on a hard day and not getting any bites, you're grateful to catch even a dogfish. Let's get him back. Guys, <laughs> they've gone very quiet. We've been messing around with the deeper, and then I thought, I'll go for one of these. Oh, choking on the sandwich. I'm going to go for one of these. <laughs> That's a sausage sandwich, and I think it's down my throat. <laughs> Cup of tea, guaranteed, there you go, look. One bite, <laughs> fish on. It's like good luck when you have one bit bite of a sandwich. It's a nightmare, I was just yeah. messing about, as you can see. We've had a couple of runs on the big rods, and I thought I'd just sit down and see if I can break the lid of the bait bucket. <laughs> see uh, the specialist tackle you're using there. Yeah, this is the old five pound bite Ooh. robbery. <laughs> How's that sausage going <laughs> Sorry, that, that was actually that ship over there. <laughs> ship over there yeah. It's a warship coming through. Yeah. Honestly, it really wasn't the sausage. Uh, God, how much lines on this reel? Yeah. I think this might be a bream. Do you reckon? Oh yeah. No black way. Bream, black bream. Another species. Another species. And these guys will always hang around a wreck or reef, indeed a reef. That's not a bad little bream. That's look. A I mean, good you know, years ago they used to eat a lot of these. We've all, we've all caught loads of them and kept too many. And nowadays you let them go. But we were getting taps on the big baits. We got some really big baits. It's probably why the fishing slowed up, but ouch. They also have spikes. But if you want to catch bream, small hooks, smaller lines. I'd love for that thresher shark to take off that line in a minute. Spinning and twisting. What do you think? Could be something different. Be nice to think we could get a smooth hound. He's out there under the water. See him under the surface? It looks like a tote, small tote. What is it? It tope. is small tote. That is a small tote, but that was on the mackerel, I think. It that all counts. On squid. It's on squid. On the squid? Yeah, on the squid. So figure what's happening there. It's a breeze, you can just see it ripple in the back of us, because you can see here our smooth shark drift, where we got the thresher line out there in the shark drift, and it's slicked it all off, so you can see the wind has come up, and I think that's what it's done. What we were talking earlier has probably just moved us off a little bit. And you can see the teeth on that guy. Only a small one, but he's still got teeth. Look how well hooked that is. Yeah. Perfect. Well, master angler, isn't it? <laughs> well, the one that falls in rivers. I can't get the, yeah, can't get the hook out now. <laughs> there he is. There's a little mini ones. I do one for tagging this, because that gives a maximum lifespan for following them, growth rates, movements, everything like that. It's incredibly strong. Mm. So. What we're going to probably have to do is alter the boat's angle a little bit. I think the wind, southerly wind, has pushed us slightly off the wreck. So you think you're fishing with the tide back here, but the wreck is, in fact is up over here. Anyway, what do I know? We just caught a fish. Who cares? Definitely a fish on here. 
we're, we're sort of ticking away at different species now. And Whoa. this one's definitely fighting one. I don't know what it is. That's a doggy, I think. No. No, what the hell is that? It's a rass. It's a oh, rass. nice rass. Good rass, man. Another species. Another oh, species. Oh, this is, oh, it's got this line as well, No, it's not. It? No, that's a separate line. That's not a fish. Quite in this one as well. That is a fish. Look at the colour. I've never caught a rass that colour. It's a boat called rass. It's a ballon. That is awesome. Look at that. That's like a golden, golden sort of yellowy. Right. It's it? uh, oh. totally different to the other ones we catch off the shore, isn't it? We usually get green, dark kelp ones, but obviously it, it's That's weird with that green on his well, tail, so. yeah. Wheel him in. A couple of pounds or so. Oh, that's a good rass. Have a look at this fish. Hold on, let's get a better hold of him. That's a sign that we must be close to the broken ground around the wreck or the wreck itself. Oh, because we all know rass like yeah. rough ground. Rough ground. They are not a sand feeder. They don't feed over sand. They like kelp. They like weed beds. But, um... Yeah, really, really good fish. Happy with that. Yeah, a little bit a little of squid. Bit of squid yeah. And he's hooked perfectly in the top lip there. And we're getting bites now on the other rod, so it might be a, t a change coming. We might be getting a few more fish. Who exactly, knows? yeah. Yeah, maybe the wind has actually helped us. Yeah, it all, it all counts anyway. All counts. Fish in it. Got the fish in it. Good. And what's that? Fish. Fish on. Hang on a minute. Fish on this rod. Did, oh, it hit you? Oh, did the rod butt hit you? I wonder what was banging against me. That's, a, that's another fish on here. Totally awesome, carnage. Look at that rod bend. This another telescopic rod tearing it up on Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Don't leave home without one. Yeah, look at this. It's only got four rod rings. <laughs> Killing it. <laughs> look at that. Mm. I think it might be a black bream. Let's have a look. Might be another one of these big rafts. Gee, nice. He took some line out, I tell you. What is he? Drag not spinning? Bream. Oh, nice black bream, yeah. yeah let's bring him in and get a picture of the pair. Oh, they show the guys we're not messing around. Watch a loose hook at the uh, top. There's, there's a bream. And you can double bream. whammy. And we just show the folks. Here we go. That's Black what we call rass. Mixed fishing, a ball high sea drifter. Black bream, rass. It's all happening here. The only thing we're missing is the Mr. T. The thresher shark. The thresher, yeah. Let's get these back. Oh boys. What have you got? <laughs> that is just a solid. Have you got a lump of coral concrete or something? I've either got the anchor rope, a piece of the wreck. <laughs> is it a fish? Or a fish that's too large for this rod. <laughs> or my other leads. I don't think I've got my other leads. Is it kicking? Yeah, yeah, it kicked just now. Look at it. That's maxed out the that's, telescopic that's, rod that's there, about people. To go, I think. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's moving, I don't understand it. If I, if I didn't have a couple of thumps on the rod top, I would have thought it was actually I'm bringing up one of my lead lines or something like that. I'm looking around, I don't see anything. Oh, look at the bites on the left hand rod back there. <laughs> it's all happening here. We just put a fresh. It's going round. Out for the thresher shark. It's moving, look, isn't it? Yeah. Is it a rage, you think? It's plane, planing up. I don't know. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, he's going, he's going, he's going. <laughs> <laughs> you had to pull line off with your hand. It's <laughs> falling apart on me. <laughs> all that line I got back, he's taken. Oh, what it's is this fish? Crazy. Look at it go! <laughs> There's only 50 yards of line. <laughs> it keeps undoing itself. It's got no drag, it's got one drag setting and that's full Zero. drag. Yeah. Zero, lock up. Lock up. What the hell is this? Well, I just want to see what it is. It's definitely a fish. I've got a feeling it might be a ray the way it's planing, but it's going to go in this other line. I lost a lot of line then when the reel unscrewed itself and and gave yourself a complete service. <laughs> I can't pull any more. Look at that, maxed hook. it out. Small hooks, telescopic rod. Way to go. Didn't that rod only just go down as well? I don't know, I think you dropped it down. Yeah, I only, I only just put it down. We were messing around filming. <laughs> God, you know, that deadness is, and the way it's rising and going, about to go around the other 23 lines we've got. Hopefully not the braid. Please not the braid. <laughs> Too many rods, look at this porcupine. Oh, he's gone again. Is he going? Yeah. We can see something. I can barely get him. If there's a big current, I would never have got it. What a fish. That is obviously... No way. If I get this in, will be the biggest fish <laughs> on the tiniest rod I think I've ever used. That is totally awesome. It just shows you, if you get a little bit of luck, the sort of fish you can catch with. <laughs> One of those. You don't need all that expensive gear. I'm going to go for it, I'm going to go for it. Is it going to snap? I'm going to try. Don't hold the leader. Do the dangerous thing, get hold of him by the tail. Never get hold of a 
pulling back by the tail, but... Oh! That's a big... Look at that! <laughs> no way! That's a huge thorny for a tiny rod. For a little rod? That's not a bad old fish, girls, is it? Brilliant. You know I, don't, I think I've hooked my armpit as well. <laughs> no, nearly. That amazing. was an amazing scrap. He's got thorns on his belly, this one as well. That, guys, is a quality thornback I had on this little telescopic rod that Mike bought. For, he said he bought it from, a pound, from Poundland for a fiver. <laughs> Come on, they can't be right. It was it? something like Poundland. It, it, was, it, it was a discount shop. Yeah, charity shop. Five pounds. It? Bit of decent lion on it. And a fish like that. And do you know what? I had an epic battle with it. Let's get it back. I feel there might be another one along in a minute.